Hello and welcome to Pitch Zone, a weekly gathering of coaches that help one presenter fine tune a short pitch. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Claudio. I'm the host of this show and a presentation coach. And it is my absolute delight to welcome this week's entrepreneur, Rachel Osnos. Rachel, it is such a pleasure seeing you here today. How are you? I'm doing great, Claudio. Thank you so much. And to all the coaches uh, here at Pitch Zone, I'm really excited to be here today. Yeah, we are excited to have you here because we met briefly this week for a prep meeting and you gave me a demo, a live demo of the product and I was blown away. So anybody who loves technology, who loves to get the glimpse into the future and what's possible, you are in the right place. And I see we also have a viewer here on YouTube right now, Mummy Guide, Lala, a good friend of mine. Hello, Lala. It is a real pleasure having you here joining us from the Philippines. And well, we have a couple of coaches that will help Rachel fine tune and tidy up her pitch. Rachel, are you ready to meet them? I am ready. Let's do it. Ready, ready, ready. All right. So coach number one, Nathan Gold, hailing from San Francisco, probably the top pitch coach in the world. The real deal has been doing this for 15 years already. Nathan, always a great, great pleasure having you here. How is life Thank in San you. Francisco? Thank you. Thank you. Life is better now that you just introduced me that way. Can you go with me on all of my events that I go to and just tell people that? I appreciate that. Thank you. Will do. Nice will to do. Will do. Will do. For a friend, I do everything. Anything. <laughs> Not everything, but anything. <laughs> all right, Nathan, I'm going to park you right over here into the coaches okay. row and bring in Rick Pollack, coach number two. Rick is joining us from Boston, Massachusetts, another highly accomplished presentation coach with a lot of experience with TEDx speakers and with uh, presenters who have technical presentations and Rick helps them to make those presentations less technical and more palatable. Rick, real pleasure having you here as well today. How is Boston? Boston is fine, a little chilly this morning. Uh, and I'm happy to be here and looking forward to Rachel's pitch. All right, all right. Rick, I'm going to park you in the coach's row as well and bring in Ashley Williams. <laughs> and those who follow me on LinkedIn, you may have seen my excitement that we have a new coach uh, joining us here today for the first time. Ashley, it is such a great, great pleasure having you here. Um, yeah. yeah, it's such a great pleasure. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We met not too long ago, and I was highly, highly impressed with you as a presenter on one side, but also with your feeling to provide feedback to others, right? You are a judge at pitch con contests, and you are one of the most sought after speakers in the entire state of Michigan. Tell us a little <laughs> bit, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet of you to say. Um, yeah, so I'm the founder and CEO of Razar. We are a content marketplace where we vet and match content creators with brands. And we got connected through the Comcast Sports Tech Accelerator, which I was so thrilled and delighted to have you and Nathan as our storyteller coaches. And it was just such a pleasure working with you. So thank you for all you all do. It's amazing. Uh, thank you. Thank you for these kind words, Ashley. I'm going to put you into the coach's row as well for the moment. And before we get to the actual pitch, Rachel, let me quickly also say hello to Max, Chip, Chip Max from <laughs> Thailand. Hello, hello, hello. And we also have Massimo Peroncelli. He's joining us from Thailand as well. This is going to be the Southeast Asian pitch zone this evening. And mommy... Lala says hi to all of the competent coaches as well. 
very kind, very kind. And we have Stuart Pink as well. He is one of our pitch zone coaches as well. So he will definitely also have feedback for our presenter. And anybody who's watching right now, while you watch Rachel's pitch, please put your comments into the chat box, uh, into the comment section. Whether you notice something that she's doing extraordinarily well, or whether you're noticing something that she could improve, all kinds of feedback is greatly, greatly appreciated. Okay, so Rachel, are you ready? Yes, let's do this. Um, all right. I, shall I share my screen? Oh, yes, please do. Please do. We had such an engaging discussion before that we almost missed the most important part. Wow. <laughs> so, yes, please share it. Yeah, I see it. Come in. Really? Yep, you're good. And so, that's ready to go at the right time. We are ready to go whenever you are ready. I'm going to switch over to just your solo view for the moment, Rachel. And whenever you are ready, or shortly before you are really, really ready, take a deep breath. And the floor is yours whenever you are ready. Brilliant. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Osnos, and I'm the co-founder of Photostax, where we're revolutionizing how you capture and share experiences. We believe the best part of life are the times that you share in person with people you love. At Photostax, we're building tech that enhances and brings more joy to those shared moments. Have you ever wished you could print a live photo from your phone or a GIF? Now you can. Our first product is the Photostax Motion, a handheld printer that connects to your phone via Bluetooth and turns it into an instant print camera. But more importantly, it enables you to capture and instantly print photos in motion like this. Photos in 3D and high quality still images too. Simply connect your phone, capture your photo through our app and instantly print and share. Now, let me take you behind the scenes of the business now that you've gotten a preview of the product. So our story began when my partner slash co-founder Jonathan and I got married. So you're seeing instant print photos from the wedding there and using an instant print camera at the at the wedding was so much fun, but we wish that one, they were higher quality and two, that there was a way to more fully capture the emotion of the moment, the motion. And we're not alone. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to change the slide. Let's see. There we go. So we're not alone. There is a $4.5 billion consumer instant print market which has grown at a CAGR of 53% from, 20, from 2008 to 2021. And as we're increasingly living digital lifestyles, we see that we're craving balance with tangibility. Short form video like TikTok, Reels, GIFs, and live photos are increasingly how we want to express ourselves and communicate. And at the same time, 36% of con consumers are feeling digital fatigue. Now, I come from an events production and marketing background. And Jonathan, my co-founder, is one of a few 3D emotion printing experts in the world. And he also has a background in finance. We saw an opportunity here and founded Photostax in 2021. So fast forward to now, <laughs> we are building the only instant printer capable of 3D emotion photos on the market, made possible by recent advances in miniature printing tech. We've developed prototypes of our first product. We've signed a signed letter. We've secured a signed letter of intent to stock at Selfridges and the patent on our underlying technology has been found novel and inventive by the International PCD Patent Authority. So just to give you a little bit more context, our patent protection is broad, covering any printer that can make 3D in motion images with a cartridge and any cartridge that can be used for 3D in motion image printing. Oops, so sorry. <laughs> So just to give you a bit more context on our customer and manufacturing research, we're looking at an 83% profit margin on the consumables, which is at the core of our business model of high margin repeat revenue. Now we're raising a pre-seed round to bring tech talent on full-time launch and manufacture. 
And we'd love for you to join us on this creative experience tech journey. Let me know if you'd like to get involved. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. That was truly, truly, truly amazing pitch, Rachel. And I feel like Harry Potter just became real. You know, the moving <laughs> images. This is absolutely great, great technology. My only feedback right now is I noticed you were speeding up tremendously towards the end. I think you kept an eye on the clock and all of a sudden you were just speeding up and speeding up and speeding up. And in this case here, I would recommend don't, right? Don't, depending on the venue. If you are really fighting against the clock, well, yeah. If they switch off the microphone after three minutes, you gotta get everything in. But if there's a little bit wiggle room, like there is here today, it doesn't matter if you go a little over, 10 seconds, seven seconds over, but it will be much, much uh, clearer if you are not rushing through towards the end, right? Um, we have today, we have a fairly active community here on YouTube. So before I go over to Nathan and open up the floor for his feedback, let me quickly bring up the comments here. Let me scroll to the right spot. Here we go. So we have um, here. Oh my God, Rachel, that is an awesome product. Okay. That's the response from Mummy Lala. And as a scrapbooker and memory keeper, and by the way, Lala has a very, very active um, social media presence, a very active YouTube channel. Uh, she knows what she's talking about when it comes to memory keeping, scrapbooking, and so on. Her community will love it. I love this. Love that. All right. And I see we just lost our stream to LinkedIn. Not unexpected. <laughs> it's no problem. We continue <laughs> here on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Massimo, if those props are real, photo results, I would suggest start with them. Show them at the start of the pitch. So many Bluetooth printers, but I have never seen those 3D or moving ones. Mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And Lala wants to know how much does this cost, Rachel? It's probably a question you're getting quite often. How much <laughs> does it cost? So we're looking at between 150 to 200 pounds for the printer Fair. and then photo packs 30 with 20, at least 20 photos in that photo pack. But again, we're still in the early stages. So follow along, please. We'd love to keep in touch. Lala. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Stuart also mentioned that he agrees with Massimo. Come right out of the bat, right out with the demo of the product. Uh, what if photos could move? A very powerful opening statement. Great job, great product. Uh, oh my, I was so focused on the amazing product and Rachel's presentation. I am not a speaker, but you got me hooked on that presentation. Wow. And Dwayne, Dr. Dwayne, welcome to Pitch Zone. So um, let's start our, our coach's feedback here today with Nathan. Nathan, what kind of feedback do you have for Rachel? Well, I'm standing applauding. It was a really fun presentation to watch. And it immediately threw me back to, to the days of the Polaroid cameras that we all had back when now, you know, in the 70s and the, maybe. And it felt a little bit like uh, you could get, uh, let me back up, all the comments about the opening I agree with and if you take a look at what you're doing there, I think you can get us even more engaged with what you're doing by maybe not showing the camera piece right away, but doing what Massimo said and show us the picture, that high quality 2D picture, and then say, oh, that's just the beginning. That's, that's the first step. But you can also get pictures that do this and it gets better. You can even do pictures like this. 
So it feels like using Massimo and Stuart's idea of starting with those pictures up front and then saying, now, how did these pictures get printed? You just take your smartphone, slap on our photo stacks and print away. All those come from that one printer? Wow, mind blown. I have more, but I wanna pass it on to the other uh, coaches as well. But you're opening, you got us and all of us, maybe a little fine tuning will like make, not only make our eyes bug out, but stay bugged out. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Sure. Yeah, and Nathan, I, I agree with you on that. And Rachel, very, very, very nice presentation. Uh, I knew right at the beginning, you know, what the product was. I think a lot of things, especially on tech presentations, that investors will be one minute in, a minute and a half in, and still not understand it. And I think in your case, I like the opening where you said capture and share experiences. So you've really differentiated that it's not a photo. It's not a still photo anymore or something that someone posts on Instagram. You are capturing and sharing the experiences. And then also what you said, uh, the tech is enhancing and bringing joy. So you're, the investors are investing in more than just a Bluetooth printer. This is the experience that you're selling. And mm. you, know, you brought that out well. I think you want to make sure you keep that throughout the pitch. And I think another thing you mentioned was that the digital fatigue. And I think, you know, I, I go back even before Nathan with Polaroid cameras and even the, uh, you know, the stereoscopes, you know, the, the old uh, technology. And I think a lot of people thought, oh, yeah, well, Polaroid cameras, that technology's dead. Uh, and everything's on Instagram now. People prefer that instead of a hard copy. And, you know, from what your research is, you've proven them wrong. There's a 4.5 billion market out there. But I think you need to make sure that comes across throughout that because you don't want an investor in that first minute to just kind of tune out and say, oh, yeah, well, now that, that's old technology. And I think one thing that's changed, and maybe this is a good metaphor to use, but vinyl records are now outselling cds and a technology that everyone thought was dead 20 years ago 30 years ago that's actually come back and i think in this case you have the same thing where th those prints that you hand people that everyone thought was dead 20 years ago this is coming back as well and it's worth investing in so i think that's a good point to make uh, so the other thing uh, that you had before I turn it over to Ashley is I thought you could close a lot better. You just said, you know, here it is. We've got the patent protection. Let me know if you'd like to get involved. You can have a much stronger close than that. What are you asking for? How much money? What are you going to do with the money? Because, you know, if you just say, well, it's almost like asking someone, say, well, let me know if you'd like to help. If you're more specific, you're going to get a much better response. So those are my initial comments. Uh, Ashley, what, what did you think? Well, Rachel, I thought you did an excellent job. It, it's such a great product. I'm so excited personally to buy one. <laughs> um, and especially being in the content creator space, I just believe like it's gonna be so useful for creators as well um, and having other ways of distributing their content and um, also ways of making money from that distribution. Like if they're going to an event or something and being able to instantly be able to give that to people who are, you know, um, they're connecting with at that event. One thing though that I loved, and it's funny that Rick said this about the, I wanna say if I'm pronouncing this correctly, excuse me, but like the non stalot the, the memories, I'll just put it that way, that like people form with a product like this. Cause it made me in, in, instantly, as you were showcasing like those Polaroid photos from when we were kids, you know, and that we used to love uh, taking those. And so I'm thinking if there's a way where you're um, talking about the product and how it evolved, like how, you know, we had this thing or like even with vinyl, like we had vinyl, like something related to how it's evolved. And now this is the new <laughs> evolution of that, you know, and even though um, I, I think it would be a great way to like align and to forget people to understand the similarities to how in this next generation, this is the new form of that. Cause everyone is on their phone. Everybody's using their phone for pictures. So some way that you could capture like the evolution of 
of what used to be and what is now, and this is what is now that you have um, come up with. I also think um, in that way, if there's a way that you can talk about how innovative it is with your patents, because I think you got to it later in the presentation, but that is so unique and it's such a, uh, a, a huge gem that you have um, for market leverage for like, I'm thinking of like, even on Shark Tank, like you should definitely go on there. Um, but even for when they ask, like, do you have a patent on it? Like, that's an immediate thing that you can, you know, talk about, like, it's a patent pin, patent, patented technology, etc, that you can put up front. And then the other thing is, I loved how you presented on the market opportunity and showcased like how it's grown over the years, like in that way. But I also would have loved for you just to talk about your distribution plan and how you plan to get this in the hands of different individuals that you're trying to sell it to. Because I think then not only are you showing that it's a growing market, but you're also able to showcase too how you're going to be able to get this to all these different individuals who are going to buy it. And then from an investor standpoint, they're like, yes, she already has the plan together. And clearly you do have this plan. I know you already do. I'm just saying, you know, I think part putting it in the pitch deck would be, or like in your presentation would be good as well, just to instantly um, get that across. And so there's, there's such an appetite then for them to want to invest in you. So, but I think you did a great job. Thank you wow. so much. Yeah. Thanks to all the coaches. Thank you. Great feedback so far. We are not done yet, Rachel. There is more where that came from. I'm absolutely sure the coaches are actually texting me in the back. Hey, I want to go next. I want to go next. I have something else. So hold on, hold on, hold on. But before I go, go back to Nathan, I want to quickly ask you, Rachel, were you reading? Um, yes, I was referring at times. And I would love your feedback on whether that was problematic as you were following along the story of the pitch. Um, it's something that I think, even though I've practiced, I can use it as a crutch. So yeah, definitely something that I can work on there. Well, one of our coaches that's on YouTube did have an issue with it. Stuart mentioned that you are a very personable presenter that any audience will warm to. You read your speech well. But I'd love to see you present it in your own words so that the script doesn't get in the way. So even if you have the skill to read something that it sounds conversational, some ears still pick it up, right? Mm -hmm. So I think for you, the next, because you know what you're talking about. You are passionate about what, about what you're talking about, right? So I think it's probably time to ditch the script. Sounds good. All right, Nathan. Yes, indeed. Okay, so I want to go back to what Rick said about your clothes because it, it, one obvious close to me is just go back to where you started. Just end with the ask followed by who would like to get involved in helping people create more experiences and share them with loved ones. All right, just go back to where you started. I think that would be a very simple way to end it uh, to, to have it more, more emotion, that emotional connection again at the end. Uh, one thing I want to talk to you about briefly, and how long have you been looking to raise your money now? How, how long have you been doing this? So it's just sort of, we've been working on our pitch and finalizing materials over the last two, three months. Okay. How many investors have you met with so far? Um, not so many. We're still at the beginning of that okay. journey. So under 10. All right. Under 10. All right. So then I don't know if you've heard this from anybody yet, but it's it's important that you and our audience realize that Rachel is in a very challenging position. To raise money as a hardware company, hardware and software, yes, I get that, but you are creating a piece of hardware. There are very few investors that have the stomach to invest in hardware. So I hope that you realize that you're going to have to go through quite a few investors to meet those special people that are totally comfortable waiting six more months for a new tool to be built because it's a little off by a millimeter and now we have to wait so six months and $100,000 and so forth and so on. So it's just, it's just a more of a mindset. It's okay to have hardware, obviously, and maybe your strategy one day is to have someone else 
build the hardware, support the hardware, ship the hardware, warranty the hardware, and now you become basically a, a software and a data company. I hope that is within your plans in the future. Who knows? I don't know, but I don't want to design your company, but I just wanted everybody to realize that Rachel has a huge challenge on her hands. Most people are going to say, nope, not interested. We don't touch hardware. And that's okay. That's all right. Just love those people, as I normally suggest. Love them. Say thank you. Do you happen to know one person in your network that might be hardware savvy and is interested, would might be interested in this? If you ask everybody that one person in your hardware, I mean, in your network, I think you'll probably network your way right to the right people as quickly as possible. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're going into a challenging phase and raising is never easy for any startup, but, um, yeah, we have an extra layer of challenge and yeah, absolutely. If you or any of the coaches know anyone or anybody who's on the call right now, know anybody in their network who has an interest in hardware or imaging tech, would love to speak with them. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ready to, well, you know, get the feedback in the nose and keep going. Okay. Well, feel free to connect up with me on LinkedIn. And there's definitely people in my network that I'd be happy to introduce you to. Just search, search on hardware or contact me afterwards and I'll connect you up. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And, and, and Rachel, I'll, I'll follow up on Nathan, what Nathan's saying, because yeah, you have a challenge and this is really for any founder, any presenter in that first minute, the, the investors are going to see something that's going to be a red flag. They're going to say, oh, it's hardware. I'm not interested in hardware. Or another thing you mentioned that you and your husband are co-founders. And that can scare off a lot of investors. I remember Nathan talking about that uh, you know, on a previous episode where we had a husband and wife team. So I think if you are going to, you know, you, you need to be aware of that. So if an investor has a red flag, whether it's hardware, whether it's husband and wife, whether it's something else, you want to make sure in that first minute, minute and a half that you have something that's going to put them at ease. Or if mm -hmm. they're going to say, I'm out, then that's okay. <laughs> you want to qualify. You don't want to end up with a lot of discussions with them and then find out that uh, that's, that's going to be a problem. So, you know, looking at that uh, from that, I think sometimes you'll see a lot of investors or, you know, people in a pitch, they'll start getting into a lot of the technical details. Well, wait a minute, I've got a seven inch long phone and so-and-so has a five inch long phone. How are they both going to fit into that printer? And, you know, you want to steer away from all the technical details of that and get back to sharing the experience, sharing that joy, because that's really what it's about. Don't get caught up in all the details of the tech of how things fit together. You know, it's more of selling that idea. And then they're going to say, yeah, that's a great market. I'm in and you have to inspire the confidence in them that you and your husband, your team can get through that technical challenge and address this huge $4.5 billion market. So don't get caught up in that, but you have to acknowledge that people are going to say, you know, or that printer, or who's going to want to carry around the printer. That was when I first looked at it. I said, well, that's nice, but this is, uh, you know, Gen Z, you know, they don't even want to carry wallets anymore. They want to carry, here's everything's on my smartphone and I don't want to carry this huge printer around either. So I, you know, want to make sure that you can address, you know, some of those objections up front so people know that, you know, you have the capability to handle those objections and put their minds at ease. So Ashley, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, you know, I wanna say, Rachel, like um, I hope these are all like helpful insights, but you ultimately know intuitively what, you know, is the best for your company. One thing I will say is that um, I know they were just mentioning, and not to differ with it, because I know we all have different opinions and things like that. So it's healthy. It's a healthy conversation because I'm I'm also learning and um, at the same time. But you know, people hold those handheld um, things like to talk to the camera all the time, and those are very kind of you could say bulky. You know, outside. I mean, they're kind of not too big, but you know, um, in order for them to be able to hold their camera as they're talking to the camera, and Gen Zers and Millennials do this all the time. So I don't feel like they it would be in a um, 
impediment, whatever that word is, but I can't pronounce my words today. But anyways, but I don't feel like it would interfere with their experience, especially because of the fact that if they're able to print out things, it might be, I don't, I don't, I mean, if they really love the product, I don't think it would be bothersome to them to be able to have to carry it around. I mean, they carry around those camcord, the tripod things all the time to shoot on, you know, so I mean, whatever. And then um, in terms of the hardware items, I do think that, you know, and you probably are already doing this with your list of investors that you're going after, but it is just making sure like you're, and I, like I said, I feel like you're probably already doing this intuitively, just going after the ones who are really focused on hardware, who don't have any, you know, um, previous um, inclinations regarding wanting to invest in a hardware company. And so it's just having a focus on that, getting to the point with them around if they're interested or not, just from your initial email and then moving on if it's not. Um, because I really believe there is a market opportunity for this, just knowing the content creator space and the creator space. So I think you'll be fine. I just think that you have to also pinpoint out that um, this is something that would be, it, it previously from other things that have been used in the past and also like with the tripod, whatever else, this is just another thing added on to help with that creator or that um, memory type of journey that people want to adapt and bring into their lifestyle. Um, and especially now because so many um, individuals like things like vinyl records and et cetera, like from the past, I think it will be, you know, just adding on to that. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to think of anything else that you could do. I, I think just the ending part, like they were mentioning could be a little bit stronger, but I think you can, you'll figure that out from tweaking the beginning part and how you can intertwine that with the end part. But I think, um, don't be, um, downtrodden or feel like, you know, any type of uh, negativity regarding selling it to the investors because there are definitely plenty of investors out there and i'm sure once you get one on board it's going to be much easier to get all the other ones on board it's just finding the one who really believes in that in the product believes in you i would also mention maybe i'll um i know you have the pictures of you and your husband in that you know opening part of showcasing the um when you're talking about how you came up with this idea I'm wondering if there's a way for you not to necessarily say, not necessarily to say that you all are you're married at the beginning, but I realize that's how you came up with the idea, because maybe that's something that you would want them to you know ask you about. But then again, maybe you want to just put that up front and just say, hey, yeah, we are married. This is my co-founder, etc. And just you know, if they have any again inclinations about that, then they will just let you know, and then you can go to the person who won't have inclinations about that, because there are clearly many founders who are married etc. So I think you're going to do great. I have no worries about you at all. I love this product. And as soon as you have it on the market, you let me know because I'm going to buy one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, this is really helpful to get feedback from from Ashley and from Rick and, and Nathan as well. It I think this was a slightly more experimental version of the pitch and one that does that did sort of bring uh, our partnership and that's in the background to the foreground. So yeah, really helpful helping me think through how to tell this story. And you know, one more thing that just came to mind. Sorry, Claudia. I just thought about <laughs> <Sorry>. one thing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, I just got this uh, thought. You know, you might want to talk about the challenge right now when it comes to printing. Because every time I want to print something from my phone, I either have to go put it on my computer, but I don't really like mm -hmm. how it comes out on my printer, right? I have to go to like CVS or like FedEx or whatever else. I have to go to a print shop to get an actual quality photo. So I think you could put that, that is a challenge right now. And most people, if they could have a thing where if I, if I didn't have to go to uh, one of those places, it would be amazing. So I think you could put maybe like a slide in or something or talking about the challenge right now is if, if people want a quality photo, even outside of it being a cool photo, how you have the different ones, they have to go someplace to actually get it, right? I mean, and I guess you can print it on your, you can do different quality ones in your printer, but I still like, to me, sometimes they're not as the same quality as going to one of those printing shops, you know, just saying. That's it. <laughs> I love all of this feedback. This is so great. And I also want to quickly bring up some more comments from our viewers out there. Thank you all very much for being so uh, engaged here today. Massimo says, as someone will say for sure, stories and emotions are the two most important things in a pitch. So if you have a real picture of you with a relatable story with the audience, 
then you can show that picture and start telling the story. I don't want to sound too emotional, but anything related to a kid or a pet will always resonate well. Yeah, so that's a good point, right? Um, engineer that photo for maximum impact. Use photos for maximum impact. And if you can use a photo that ties into a story and is personal and evokes some emotions, more power to you. And then, uh, thank you, Mommy, Lala, amazing feedback from all of the coaches and cheering you on and hope this, you get this product in the market soon. Uh, Stuart, I imagine this would be a huge product for weddings. Oh, yes, absolutely. Weddings, anything along that line. Uh, Lala agrees. Absolutely. All right. So we have still a couple minutes here <laughs> on the clock. And I know Nathan has uh, another bit of feedback. So Nathan, take it over. Sure thing. Yes, uh, Rachel, I just wanted you and, and our entire audience to know that you now have two strikes to work with here. I didn't, I, I didn't recall the fact that you had mentioned that you and your husband are the co-founders. And I don't mean it's a strike against you. It's just two yellow flags in a lot of people's minds for investors. And the second one, the husband and wife team, you might never find out that they don't invest in husband and wife teams simply because whatever, a thousand reasons why. But just know that it is possible and that people get real successful. Do you know the names of a couple of very popular companies that were started with husband and wife teams? Do you know any right now? Yes. I don't want to, you do? Or no? Oh, no. It well, sounds I mean, like Ashley's <laughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead. Hey, hey. Cisco, not, not the food company, not the food company, Cisco, Eventbrite, cliff bars, and the list goes on. So if you run into an investor that is shy against husband and wife teams, you may not be able to change their minds. But you can always say, well, have you heard of the company? You know, I, I, you don't want to get into a defensive mode with these people, but sometimes they don't even realize companies like Cisco and Eventbrite and others have done very well with husband and wife teams. But you, you just might have to sift through to find the investors who are comfortable with husband and wife teams. <laughs> now, do you and your husband have different last names right now? Uh, we do actually. Okay, so you can hide that for the tempor for temporarily if you wanted to, but it's gonna come out in due diligence or in the second or third meeting. So, uh, you know, you could hide it temp temporarily because of that, but I yeah, just let it come out up front and you don't waste anybody's time. Yes. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is in terms of your reading, some people can still perform really well in the virtual world, in this on-screen world that we're all in, by using a teleprompter. And I don't want you to go out and buy a whole lot of equipment and put a teleprompter in front of you and do all of that because there are free teleprompters in browser, in a browser window that you can explore and experiment with. And I've had a significant number of clients who are presenting in the virtual world using a teleprompter right next to the camera and they are able to get so comfortable with what they want to say that eventually it doesn't sound like they're reading it anymore because the stress of remembering what you want to say is gone all you need to do is know where you want to put the punch where do you want to put the emphasis and the pauses and actually you can put those little notes in the script and as it's rolling through the screen you just pause wait move on so it's not for everybody but teleprompting in the virtual world can help you get even closer to the story you want to say because the more you do it, the more it's going to sound like a song in your head and one day you won't need the teleprompter. Okay? Absolutely. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. And, and Rachel, I just wanted to uh, compliment you on the way you framed everything because you've got a technical product and I think a lot of founders will get too much into the technology. But what you did is you talked about photos. Everyone understands photos and you focused on that digital fatigue. And you also mentioned here is a problem and you use the wedding if you want to use something else as an example. But you said the quality wasn't good and they were just still products. So you're showing your differentiation you know, from that. And it's not anything abstract. It's good to have something. It's a technique 
in speaking called anchor and twist. Anchor it to something people know with a twist. So if you anchor it to a Polaroid photo that people understand, and especially the investors will probably be baby boomers <laughs> instead of uh, Gen Z, but they'll understand Polaroid. But you can say, okay, yeah, this is the anchor, the instant print, but here's the twist on it. It's motion. It's better quality. And go back to it. It's not just sharing that piece of paper. It's sharing that experience. And, and you did a good job with it, but make sure that that doesn't get lost when you redo the pitch, because that's really what's going to draw people in. They'll understand it very quickly. They'll care about it, and they'll remember it. And those are important things. Understand, care, and remember that the investor, that the audience has to do. That's, that's really a test of how successful the pitch is. Do they understand it? Do they care about it? Are they going to remember it? And having something to twist it to, to anchor it to, is really going to help. And, you know, you did a good job on that. So, uh, you know, congratulations on that and make sure that you, you keep that in so people understand that. Wow, this is an amazing episode of Pitch Zone. And I couldn't agree more with Rick. You did an amazing job here today, Rachel. The way that you present this, the way that you build credibility, uh, the way that you come across is absolutely great. Now, I hope you got a lot of feedback that you can sink your teeth in and you do not have to take all of this feedback in, right? I mean, now you can just pick and choose and say what makes sense. You'll, you'll work with that and ignore some other bits. Um, but what I, would like you, what I would like to do is invite you back to come back once you digested the feedback and come back with a new and improved version of this pitch, a new iteration because uh, yeah, I think, I think that would be awesome. So please, please, please come back. And to anybody out there who would like to sit in Rachel's seat, please apply here at pitchzone.life and pick a date on the calendar and we make sure that we will help you to improve your pitch, uh, hopefully drastically. All right, so that gets us to the end. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Click on that little link and that button below the screen. And we are getting to the very, very end. But I do want to very quickly ask you whether you are watching this live or whether you're watching this on replay to mark your calendar for next Thursday. Because next Thursday, we are going to have a very special pitch zone. We, Nathan and I, will be interviewing our two friends from Action Glow. Action Glow was on Shark Tank in the last season. They walked away with exactly the investment that they were looking for. And Nathan and I, we coached them for this big moment. And they will come into the pitch zone to give us an update. What happened in the last six months? You can imagine that once you're on national TV, once you get the buy-in from a shark, life changes drastically. So they will come to Pitch Zone, let us know how their life has changed. And of course, they will have lots of <laughs> tips and, and uh, advice for anybody, not only pitching, but who wants to go to Shark Tank. So um, that's going to be next week. And I really, really hope that you can make the live show because this is one of those shows that you know, how often do you actually have an opportunity to interact with people that were on Shark Tank? So uh, if you want to ask them questions, be there on the live. And with that, I want to thank all of the coaches. Thank you very much for this wonder, wonderful feedback. Mm -hmm. And of course, Rachel, great job again. You did a wonderful, wonderful job. And I look forward to seeing you again here in Pitch Zone. And for that, or, or in the meantime, I wish you all a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we shall see each other again next week. Have fun. Bye-bye.